Plants and humans, one thing they have in common is boundary. Like you can love them, but it still needs its boundary and I'm still learning. Hi guys, welcome to Simply Sango. Today's video is going to be all about plants. I myself, I started my collection as I started working from home last year in March, 2020 March. And yeah, my collection has been growing ever since. Disclaimer, I am in no way a professional in this field. I myself have to do research about every plant I fall in love with at the store. I have my little notebook here with all my researched notes. So if you have any plants in common that you're wondering about or if you're willing to start a plant collection, I really hope this video will help you. In each plant, I will explain to you the light habits that they have or the type of light they like and the amount of water they need and a few how to grow tips and tricks. I get my information from Google, this plant growing up called Blossom, um, my mom. <laughs> and usually uh, at plant stores in Japan, they have a little tag inside of their pot explaining basic things that you need to know about each plant. So the first plant I'll be talking about today is the Strelitzia regine, also known as the birds of paradise. It looks like this. Most of my plants are tropical looking plants because you know your girl's from the Caribbean but this is what the leaves look like. The birds of paradise likes bright light and in order for them to bloom well they need direct sunlight so they're pretty much okay with good amount of sunlight but as any plant if you keep them in the torching sun their leaves will burn right now it's winter time so you can you know open the window from time to time to let in that little sunlight that they get within winter time because in japan you know that winter time it's so cloudy so gloomy and most of the time it's raining and cloudy i already said that but whenever you get the chance of that blessing sunlight please go ahead and open the window and kind of rearrange your plant so that it will get the shower of sunlight it needs because they still even though some plants go through hibernation within i mean during winter they still need the sunlight for the birds of paradise watering you can keep the soil moist throughout the year but um, please be careful of water log when water log happens the roots will rot and then your plant will slowly die it might seem like your plant is doing fine on the outside but slowly but surely it's gonna start looking like it's losing its life however during the summer and springtime when it's you know flourishing and it's the peak of its growth it does need to be watered daily because it uses all that energy to grow so it sucks up all the water so you need to keep the, the keep watering it daily but just make sure that your soil doesn't trap water also another tip is this plant really loves high humidity so if you have a, a spray water bottle that's fine if you have a humidifier even great yeah it just loves high humidity i've been spraying my plants from time to time throughout the day since i'm already working from home so if you're in a similar situation and you have the urge to water your plant take the spray bottle and spray it instead okay so the next plant i'll be talking about is the ficus elastica tineke it's a big plant so i won't have it in my hand but it is this gorgeous leaf plant right here it has two shades with a creamish background with some splash of green on it it is also called the rubber plant it likes indirect filtered light so don't put it by the window where it's getting direct sunlight put it away from the window i'm just placing these right here for the aesthetics for a little background because my bed is kind of messy but this would be a perfect positioning for the plant because it's not as you can see it's not really touching the sunlight the sunlight right here is more direct sunlight but this is getting bright light but it's not getting directly hit by the light so it thrives in those kind of lights it requires consistent watering but because the growth is very slow during the winter time it requires less water now whenever you're watering during the summer springtime make sure that the top layer of the soil is dried out before you water it 
thoroughly. Okay, so next plant. The next plant I'll be talking about is the Stromanthi Trio Star. This is the Stromanthi Trio Star. It has well, it's called the Trio Star because it has three colors: the green, white, and the burgundy in the back. So I really love how it looks. I fell in love with it, but I, I kept shying away from them because anytime I go to a plant store, they are always in a bad condition. You know, if the plant store is not handling it well, you know damn well it's gonna be hard to take care of. So I shied away from it. This one's gonna be long, so buckle up, okay? She is the Beyonce of the batch, okay? So let me start off with the watering. She's bougie. Like, don't give her tap water, don't give her chlorinated water. She prefers spring water. She requires watering once or twice a week. She likes her soil constantly moist but not logged. So she needs that soil that drains properly. However, in the winter time, as I said, it can the soil can be kept a little bit drier than it is usually required in other seasons. Whenever you're watering, as I said before with different plants, make sure that the top layer of the soil is dry. You can never go wrong. You can never go wrong if you make sure that the top layer of the soil is dry before watering them. So Miss Beyonce, she is also picky about the temperature of water she gets. Not too chilly, not too warm. I don't know what that is, room temperature? It's a tropical plant so it is best to mimic that rainforest environment is like, you know, in a rainforest, all the trees are up there, the big trees are up there, and the light is kind of like seeping through. So I would say dappled light, like spotted light. That's it for the Stramanthe Trio Star Beyonce. I can already see like new leaves curled up, so I guess I am doing okay so far, but I don't know how long I can keep up with the spring water BS so pray for me so the next plant i'll be talking about is the ponytail palm so this is what um, my baby looks like at the moment it's called ponytail palm because as you can see it's like a ponytail um, but it's also called elephant's foot i think in some places because it looks like a little elephant trunk is kind of in the succulent area succulents are plants that doesn't require a lot of water and because they already have a system where it traps its own water succulents are like cactus um yeah that area so it doesn't need a lot of water so if you're trying to water it please be careful of overwatering it you can go between 7 to 14 days without watering it also in the winter time you only need to water it once a month i water it less i think but i do make sure i spray her with the spraying water bottle so for lighting it can accumulate to bright direct sunlight caring tips this one is pretty much like does everything on its own kind of plant it's like soil it leave it alone and it does everything on its own but as long as it has enough sunlight or water it's pretty much fine on its own like and it's also a slow grower what do you call it? it's like a statue yeah she doesn't cause much trouble she minds her own business and winds her waist so the next plant I'll be talking about is the Monstera Deliciosa. This is my first ever plant that I have bought, but it's the plant in my collection that is clinging for life, for its life right now. My Monstera Deliciosa is chopped up and separated into three jars right now. One, two, three. <laughs> So it's hanging on for dear life. I don't know how this is gonna go, but I've seen so many videos on YouTube and Instagram and TikTok where they have revived Monsteras. So I'm not giving up on her yet. Monstera deliciosas are probably one of the most easiest plants to take care of, apparently. For lighting, it loves bright indirect sunlight. It does not require a lot of watering. Their roots are really, really easy to rot. So make sure that the top layer of the soil is dry before watering. It requires watering, yeah, once a week, technically. For Monstera deliciosa, it loves 
humid places so make sure you have water spray bottle in check and spray her leaves so the next plant i'll be talking about is the areca palm for this plant you need to water it two to three times a week um but winter time you just let it be let it be if the soil gets too dry like you can lift your pot when it's fully wet compared to when it's dry and you can compare the weight and that can also be a signifier of whether it needs watering or not it's a thirsty girl so it loves water but make sure that your pot has draining holes has the soil that drains water easily make sure that your pot doesn't sit in the plate after watering it just make sure that the water goes through for light it likes bright light um, a little bit of direct sunlight too much can burn the leaves and turn it yellow green so be careful okay but fun fact this plant is a natural air purifier so i can't tell the difference to be honest okay so the next plant i'll be talking about is this beautiful pothos watering it once or twice a week is fine only water it if the soil feels dry another way you can test it is just basically just touching the top of the layer of the soil you probably heard that so many times by now but now you know how dangerous overwatering your plant is I know they're cute and adorable and you want to show it some love but whenever you feel like that just take the spray bottle and sprinkle it on their leaves um, this plant is also known for its easiness to take care of because it's such a hard plant to kill but it will if you overwater it for this plant more light means more water so summertime or springtime when it's getting a lot of sunlight it does need the same amount of water okay so once or twice a week but for winter time for example when it's cloudy gloomy and it's not getting a lot of sunlight it does not need much water so it likes bright but indirect light but it can tolerate low light as well so the next plant i'll be talking about is the sensevera moonshine also known as snake plant this is also an air purifying plant very famous as a bedside plant it's a succulent so it doesn't need much water it pretty much takes care of itself for watering they can survive a long 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 time without being watering and if you ever overwater it it will rot its root um for light they grow in any light level and i'm saying like it requires minimum light i don't know it's so weird um but it does grow faster in bright light and it slows down in shadow light but do not put it in direct sunlight because it will burn its leaves okay so that's it for the snake plant for my last plant i'm gonna be talking about the dracaena lemon lime it is the cutest plant i've ever seen she's my favorite this is what it looks like it's like the perfect name for it lemon lime so it has three shades of leaf color it's like green white it's like dark green white and lime green lemon green and it, it just gives us that citrusy vibe you know um for this plant i've never seen this plant before in my life you water it once a week it likes medium to indirect bright light it can adapt to low light too so yes she's pretty you know flexible i don't know i enjoy learning new things so it wasn't really hard for me to adapt to each plant but the more the numbers grow the more i can't keep up with these information so i do have my information stacked in one place that i can refer to whenever i feel lost now i think that this is going to be really helpful during the summer spring time um, if you guys didn't start like your plant journey last year, I mean you might as well do it this year as well because it doesn't seem like we're going anywhere. I should probably tell you why I started collecting plants in the first place. One, I was kind of bored. I wanted something to take care of. Um, before starting having plants, I had a chameleon and 
some terrible incident happened that I didn't have a chameleon anymore so I kind of shifted to plants because chameleons I've heard that chameleons are technically like plants so I wanted to take care of a plant my boyfriend he's in the Navy so there would be frequent times of the year where he would be out to deployment out at sea for like a couple of months so I wanted to learn a new hobby so I can keep myself occupied and not you know being too dependent on my significant other for attention i also heard that plants are really good for your mental health and they look good okay i admit it they look good another thing i would like to share are a few places in japan that has very nice plants so i won't keep blabbering you out but i will leave the links in the description box so please feel free to check it out thank you so much for watching and i will see you in the next video bye single out